you guys welcome back to the channel and we're going to talk a little bit about the season i know it's not over just yet we have reunion part one coming up in a couple of days and then we have part two which is the final episode of season 14 in boston following wednesday but we have seen some great scenes some bad scenes we've also seen some some scenes that made us cringe a little bit and we had some very very romantic scenes as well and we're going to talk about both and so you know sometimes they ask that question do you want the good news first or you want the bad news first so we're going to start out with the worst and get that out the way right now but before we do this if you are new here Hit your subscribe button, turn on your notifications. I want to make sure you guys are notified every time I post a new video or when we go live. Because we go live pretty often on this channel. Also, if you like the video, hit that like button and feel free to drop some conversation down in the comment section below. I like to hear what you guys tend to think about the content. So without any further ado, let's go ahead and jump into this video. So, um, yeah, you know, one thing about this show is that the journey does not always go as smoothy. And all of those dramatic moments, good and bad, are definitely caught. Now, um, some seasons give more fans something to root for and other, se other uh, seasons not as much. And season 14 has been pretty divided. I know some people figured it was too long, too drawn out, and too slow. Especially with all those extra you know, episodes in the middle of the season. Yeah, it's crazy. Um... And like I said, some people actually thought it was, you know, more, a little boring this season. But we did have some moments, so we're going to talk about those. So, with our worst moment this season, we're going to start out with the first person. And that is with Miss Lindsay and the airport outrage that was happening. Now... That was a whole crazy thing that happened on their honeymoon. Um, most of what happened with this particular uh, outrage at the airport, we really didn't get to see. The cast told most of that story on the after party with Keisha Knight Pulliam. Now, it started because Lindsay was encouraging the rest of the couples to speak Spanish when, when, when they were in Puerto Rico. And remember, Elijah Wan wasn't having it. Um, they definitely was at odds at the beginning. And, you know, Lindsay was making snide comments. And it was definitely a very awkward trip. And to go even a little bit further deeper, it even got Katina involved in this thing. Because I guess things had happened at the airport where she was trying to incite a fight with him. And then, you know, the other thing was talking about his shoes. And when they got on the airplane, she was sitting behind them and instigating. And she was so loud, so obnoxious, according to what, you know, was said, that even the, um, the airline staff had to get her to sit down. And Mark even vouched for that. He vouched for that on the after party because... You know, a lot of people from especially this particular scene, she was saying, oh, my God, he he tried to do this and he tried to do that. And I felt so uncomfortable and all of this. And Mark was like on the after party. No, she was the instigator, not O and not Katina. So that whole thing was crazy. And it definitely made for a very, very, very awkward trip. So let's talk about the next, one of the next worst moments that we saw this season. And that is the bowling alley meltdown. Again, we got Lindsay and Mark in particular example. Uh, Lindsay and Mark were definitely on complete opposites um, because he was trying to keep the peace with this. And then this was still dealing with the whole thing with Katina. Um, 
I think she said something. I don't know what that comment was, but it really threw everybody off. And, you know, Katina had something to say. And, you know, of course, Mark was like trying to keep the peace. But, you know, as of course, Lindsay does not, you know, she's not afraid to call out other people. It made an uncomfortable group date. Um, and that was the episode that a lot of the fans kind of turned against Lindsay for her treatment of Mark at that bowling alley because she berated him behind his back about his salary, about his apartment, and then ended her rant by saying that she hated him. And the other thing, she was really going for his manhood because she was like, you don't satisfy her in bed and all of that. And all of that was heard by the fans everybody at that bowling alley and it was absolutely insane so that was another one of those worst moments let's see if you guys agree about this moment and you know who this is and they you know Alyssa was pretty much the villain at the beginning of the season and uh yeah that whole thing was crazy from day day one um, I mean, a lot of people, I don't know, they might have called it dramatic, good TV or whatever, but other folks kind of wish she never even came on the show this season in the first place. Um, she was immediately turned off by uh, her husband, which was Chris, and they pretty much spent the rest of their time and their very short marriage she spent a lot of time gaslighting him. And her running joke, as we also heard as a preview for the reunion, her mantra was, but I'm a good person. After, of course, she couldn't, you know, no longer keep a conversation going on, you know, with him. And after a while, it got old, you know, because, I mean, she was making snide comments. She was saying, I don't want him close to me. And then the whole thing about him waving his hand, gesturing while he was talking. She said he's waving his hands aggressively. And, and she was like, ugh, and all types of things. I think at the beginning of the season, that was one of the biggest, worst scenarios that we had this season. Most definitely one of the worst scenarios that we had this season. And then there was this couple because we had the issue with them where he has a very traditional view or some people call it antiquated view of marriage. Um, a lot of people saw him as being belittling. The pair definitely had their ups and downs. Um, we saw, of course, where there were several scenes where Katina was, was crying. And a lot of this came from this whole storyline that they had for this couple of trusting her wife skills. Um, the cooking and the hosting parties and the cleaning of the house and things like that. And how whether she measured up or not. Um, and then we also did see that whole thing between him and Dr. Pepper at that group date. And then um, saying that, you know, of course, she was wrong in her opinion about, you know, whatever she called out about her behavior. I mean, his behavior uh, at that particular episode. And fans are not feeling, oh, there are a ton of fans that are rooting for them. You know, because they see this as all over edited TV. And then you got other fans that's like, I'm not having it. I want them to be done. We just had decision day and a lot of folks was, you know, they weren't, a lot of people wasn't expecting the four yeses. They thought sure that at least one couple would say uh, no. And they was definitely expecting this couple to say no, you know, but so far, it seems as of decision day, they are staying together saying yes. And so all of the things that we saw, it just didn't sit well with a lot of the fans. So those are our four, our four um, couple so far. But we still got one more pretty bad scene, and that is this scene. 
Now, remember, all of this kind of went off the rails because they had a great, uh, they had a great wedding. Jasmina was all smiles. He was happy. And then I think a lot of this started when it was found out that Michael had two, not one, but two female roommates and wasn't disclosed at all to Jasmina. And from that point on, they spent the entire first month of their marriage pretty much not connecting, not talking. They finally got over it. But then there was this whole thing about his tone and then her her remarks and her responses toward him and when he could talk and now you could speak. And, um, you know, it was crazy for the first month. But it seems like the second month of the process, they did try to make baby steps to get to, you know, decision day. And they actually said yes on decision day, which I was not expecting at all. I was not expecting that at all. So, th yeah, these were some pretty, pretty worst scenes that um, we happened to see um, this particular season. I know that maybe you have some ones in particular that you felt that felt that that was pretty bad, but drop it in the comments. Let me know what you guys think in regards to what you thought was some of the worst scenes. Okay, so let's talk about some good stuff. <clears throat> let's talk about the most romantic, the the uh, the most romantic moments from season 14 because we had we had uh you know a pretty good few of them and we saw a lot of that now i you know what we also got to talk about one other thing and that's with this couple that was pretty bad which is noy and steve that whole noodle gate thing where she left the house she walked off disappeared for 24 hours and then turn around and then came back she was on social media putting cryptic messages out there the family's concerned they don't know what's going on and it was embarrassing to him and then this whole thing about his job that whole running storyline it was crazy so i gotta i can't forget that for this particular couple but as for romantic couples like i said before there were a lot of ups and downs but season 14 has had some very romantic moments um, a lot of them you saw romantic moments after they overcome some specific obstacle that kind of threw the relationship off the rails. And then when they do have those intimate moments, it made it a lot more special. So let's talk about our first one, which is Noi and Steve. Um, Noi, that girl felt love for this man from day one. And as they say in Married at First Sight, Australia, they die. She fell in love quick. I mean, I think it was day three. But by episode nine, he was in his feelings, for real. They had this little beachside picnic. Noi admitted she did need space from past partners, but not with Steve. And she saw that as a good omen. And then that's when we saw Steve kind of take the plunge to verbalize that he that he was finally ready to let Noi that he loved her in this particular episode. So, you know, um, she was squealing and, you know, they had their cute little smooches uh, with the sunset on the beach, a little, little picnic and a wine and a picnic basket. So I thought that was really, really romantic. So let's talk about this one. So during this season, you know, like I said before, with the worst things that happened this season, they also had some, you know, some good moments. This is one of them. Uh, they really pulled their strength together and come together with uh, what happened with um, Mark's cat. Uh, you know, Mark's cat had passed away and it, it it actually became one of the sweetest moments between this couple. This is where Mark even said during the episode, it's one of those events where when a couple goes through a tragedy, it can really shape them. 
And, you know, I, I think the fans, I know I did, uh, really enjoy seeing Mark lean on Lindsay during that difficult moment. And it was so heartwarming. I mean, it was, it was really, really sweet and supportive. Now, it's not one of those traditional romantic scenes like what we just talked about with Noah and Steve. But it brought them closer because of what had happened. And um, we also saw that, you know, when the couple shared their letters to themselves with one another in a later episode, it was clear that they kind of found a new foundation and some compassion for one another. So I absolutely was happy to see that scene because they, they've been tumultuous, tumultuous most of the season. So it was nice to see that one. Then we had Jazz and Michael. So this is toward the time where they had the retreat. And as I said, with the worst moments, this couple had a slow start. Because remember I said in the first month, it was uh, pretty bad, right? Uh, Things started to shift when they both took a step back and worked on fully listening to each other. Communication is key. That means you got to listen instead of getting in your own way. So then this is where on the retreat they visit or I think um, they got a visit from a medium who helped them kind of take things to the next level. Um, After bringing up medical histories in Michael's family and Jasmina unvoiced, you know, she didn't voice her desire for twins and to live in a sunny place. The medium won them both over. Um, She also said that Michael fell in love with Jasmina when he saw her and felt that they were supposed to be together. And I kind of picked that up at the wedding. I really did. Because I remember him like, wow, she's gorgeous. And she is. Um, She also said that the feelings were mutual, but they didn't know that yet. Um, The medium also had told them that, you know, the romantic energy in the room seemed to bubble up as she gave a voice to their connection. And Michael did even say on the after party that with the growth and all the work that it took to get to that point, he was really, really happy and overjoyed about that. So I actually love the fact that they did finally connect again. They, a chunk of time got away from them in the first half of the season, but we saw that they gradually got to that point, and then, of course, they said yes on decision day. And then we have this romantic moment, and this is where the month anniversary happened. And, you know, a lot of people kind of got upset with this. I saw it as extremely romantic because she was extremely creative with doing this whole thing with the gondola. Um, a lot of people automatically assume because they did not see, <clears throat> that they did not see, excuse me, Elijah one give her anything that it didn't happen. And that's the only thing about this show. We only get to see 1%. So, of course, Keisha Knight Poyam, she likes to ask the questions like, hey, you know, she did all this for you. What did you do for her? So he did romantically give her uh, a Pandora bracelet with all special charms on it, and she absolutely loved it. So, I wish we could have seen that, but we didn't. But we did see, you know, this whole gondola situation, which I think is so romantic. And they definitely had a deep connection on this particular um, escapade that was created. I also think Katina created a movie night as well. And I will say that I do like the fact that that final dinner, they really put a lot of things on the table. She appreciated the tough love. Now, a lot of people might not like that, but that's her words. And then he appreciated the fact that because of her, it grown him into being a better man. So go back to that episode and you can check that out. You know, I know a lot of people aren't feeling, oh, this season, but... You know, Katina is feeling old, and so that's what counts. Um, but anywho, this was our best moments and our worst moments of season 14. Let me know down in the comment section what was yours. Was there something that I didn't mention? 
what didn't you know what was some of the worst moments and i know people might bring up that whole cell phone thing and if you were on our live this weekend we talked about that because there was editing was they sucked on that whole piece of drama that they tried to create it because of the two phones him having a tattoo on the side of his neck and then bringing in a clip where he didn't have a tattoo on his neck so i didn't even go there because that part was manufactured but everything else i kind of wanted to touch you know i kind of wanted to touch on that so let me know what you guys think i hope you enjoyed this video like comment and subscribe and we will see you soon bye